This jet airliner is about to do something unique. Land on a tiny airstrip in the center of a city. We're about to fly the remarkable BAE-146. London City Airport. Runway 1200 meters long. Approach steep and difficult. Status out of bounds to every jet airliner in the world, except this one, the British Aerospace 146. This short, stubby little aircraft with its high wings and four jet engines is unique. It gets its passengers closer to where they want to go than any other jetliner. We're about to fly Hamburg to London City direct aboard a business air Lufthansa 146. The captain signals starting four. Lufthansa 6354 is ready for start. Beacon. On. Flight attendants, please arm the door slides. Packs and AP On. Ignition. B. Start power. Normal. Start master. On. Start select. Four. Starting four. In the left hand seat is senior captain David Rice. Co-pilot today is Captain Bob Headley. The scheduled Hamburg to London City flight is a familiar route for them and for the scores of businessmen who use it daily. Although the 146 is about 100 miles an hour slower than most other jets, its ability to land on short runways means passengers get to their destinations much more quickly than on ordinary airliners, cutting out long journeys from larger outlying airports. On a route where time is money, it's time to go. All four Textron Lycoming jets are now running. The ground engineer gives the signal and the wheel chunks are taken away. Captain Rice requests clearance to taxi from Apron Control. Six, three, five, four is ready for taxi. flat may seem a modest setting for takeoff on today's jets, but on the 146 it provides a phenomenal amount of lift. Anything to add to the briefing? Just to look at the radar before we go. 6354 for takeoff from the 3 A firm or complete? As the 146 is cleared for takeoff from Hamburg, Captain Rice pushes forward the throttles. Each one of the four engines delivers over 7,000 pounds of thrust, but much more quietly than most conventional jets. From a standing start, the 146 is airborne in just 22 seconds. There are no special tricks. No leading edge devices, just highly efficient wings bred from Airbus technology, with those trailing edge flaps, 400 square feet of them, boosting the climb out performance. Once at 6,000 feet, the crew selects the automatic pilot as the aircraft heads northwest to London. The 146 has been flying since 1981. It's Britain's best-selling jet airliner, but it's a design which has had a convoluted history going back to the 1950s and through the drawing boards of no less than five aircraft companies. Indeed, the basic concept of a short-range, city-hopping, four-engine jet airliner is as old as civil jet aviation itself. This was the very first, the Avro Jetliner of 1949, the only one ever built. Avro Canada shelved the project, but remember that name, Avro. During the Second World War, Britain's aircraft industry had been working at full stretch building warplanes. The de Havilland Aircraft Company had been turning out brand new bombers from scratch in 30 hours flat. 
Now it began to look again at the peacetime market for regional short-range airliners and at replacing the repeat biplanes and the doves and herons used by military and civilian operators with a new small jet. This was it, the 1959 DH-126, for all the world like a DC-9 ahead of its time. A 32-seat rear-engine T-tail airliner. The design was amended when Hawker Sidley took over to Haviland. Now it became the HS-131, amended to use parts of Hawker's 748 turboprop. In 1967 came another paper aeroplane, the HS-136. 57 seats, conventional tail, engines now beneath the wings. On the HS-144, the engines went back on the fuselage. The T-tail returned, but now came another problem. No suitable engines were available. It was the harsh climate of military, not civil aviation, which provided the solution. The Boeing Chinook helicopter, powered by two Lycoming T-55 turbines, had proved its reliability in all kinds of weather all over the world. And those turbines could do more than just power helicopters. Earlier versions had propelled the XM-1 Abrams battle tank. Just two Chinook engines, though, wouldn't be enough. The new airliner was going to need four. By 1970, the final shape of the 146 was set, a high-wing airliner with those four Lycoming engines suspended beneath. The technical problems were solved. The next were political. In 1974, the government announced the nationalization of Britain's aircraft industry. All work on the 146 was suspended. Four years went by before the project was allowed to start up again, under a new name. British aerospace. At last, the 146 was leaving the drawing board, but it wasn't.